Hello everyone, this is Jeff from Baron Leathercraft. So I was going through my emails about a month and a half ago, as most people do probably every day, and I was just sifting through what was important and what was potentially spam. I came across an email from a company called Sinus, which I assumed right away was spam. I opened it up, but I really wasn't paying attention. It basically was saying something about a laser engraver cutter machine that they had, which was called the Eufero Laser 2. I literally must have not have read it because I just considered it spam. It just seemed like an advertisement. I've heard of these machines. I've seen very little about them. I know in leather crafting there are people that use them. I just assumed that they were all just expensive machines and there was going to be a vast learning curve. So I never looked any deeper. I just knew that they existed. What they did I wasn't so sure. I knew that you can personalize stuff with them which sounded like a great uh, option for me to have. I know people like personalized stuff. Fortunately later on that day I took a deeper look into my emails because I was ready to delete some and I am so glad I didn't delete this because it was a company actually offering me a laser to do a review. This was totally surprising to me because my YouTube channel is relatively new. At the time they offered me this, I had about 950 subscribers and today I think I have 1150. So I cautiously got in contact with this company wondering if they were just trying to scam me in some way to get my credit card information or who knows what. The person in the marketing department said that they were fans of my leather crafting and they would like me to do a review for their product. I am so glad I did not delete this email because I love this thing. It is so much fun. It truly brought so much joy into my life. As you see, this machine is so simple to put together. I had no experience whatsoever prior to this. I watched a few YouTube videos and bam, it was put together in 10 minutes. So I hope you enjoy this video. I'm gonna share with you what I love about this Euphero Laser 2. The actual footprint of the Euphero Laser 2 is 580 millimeters. Your actual engraving space is 390 millimeters, which is plenty of space to do what you need, but they do sell an extension kit if you feel that you need more space to do your artwork. There are safety features built into the laser. The laser will immediately shut off to prevent any harm if the machine is tilted or shifted. If the computer fails during engraving or if the motor stops moving, the laser will stop. One of the great things about the Afuro Laser 2 is it doesn't have a fixed laser module. You could actually exchange what laser module you're going to use at the time depending on what you need at the time. There are four different distinct laser modules that you could use with this machine and they each have a different quality. Plus the Euphero Laser 2 is extremely fast. The LU24SF and LF both are capable of achieving speeds of 10,000 millimeters a minute. And the LU2-10, the 10 watt laser, can go up to 15,000 millimeters a minute. When it comes to using these lasers, you're going to try to find the best power and speed to complement the material that you're working with. For me, I knew I was going to be working with some pretty thick leather, so I was concerned about being able to cut it because from what I've read, leather can be difficult to cut. So I went with the LU2-10A. It is a 10 watt laser true to the output, which means by the time the laser reaches your material, it is at a true 10 watt power. Another great aspect of the LU2-10A is that it has built in air assist. You're going to have to get your own pump, but it's just waiting for the hose to be plugged in and then you automatically have air assist. You're going to want air assist. Focusing this laser is really simple. It actually has a built-in arm. You pull it down, you loosen the laser, and you make sure that the arm tip is touching the material you're using. Then go ahead and tighten the screw. Now you don't have to worry about losing any spacing device in order to be able to focus your laser. All right, let's go ahead and turn this laser on by holding down the power button until the blue light comes on and discuss the software that we're going to use to control the Euphero Laser 2. There are two options when it comes to software for controlling the Euphero Laser 2. One is Laser Gerbil. It is free. It is compatible with Windows and Linux and it is supposedly a very simple program to use but has minimal features. 
I decided to go with Lightburn. It is a paid program. It costs around $60. It works with Windows, Linux, and Mac operating system. It is basically the industry standard when it comes to laser software. They have excellent support. They have a YouTube channel. They have a forum which answers just about any question you have. The staff is active on the forum and they seem to really take a lot of pride in their software. I've learned there's a lot of techniques you can use to manipulate the outcome of your engraving. In this technique, you actually use what's called transfer tape. Transfer tape is placed on the top of the material you're engraving on sometimes. It protects it from smoke damage. There are a few things you can do to protect your material while you're engraving. All of them are great ideas. One of them, which I think is very important, is called an air assist. An air assist is really a pump with a hose connected to it aimed directly at where the laser is aiming. This air assist will blow away all the smoke and residue from your material in order to have a cleaner burn. The LU2-10A 10 watt laser comes equipped and ready for you to purchase an air assist. All you have to do is buy the pump and then just plug in the tube and you're ready to go. Another important item is a honeycomb bed. This is what you see the material lying on top of right now. This makes it so you can cut materials out without damaging whatever table you're on. Just like that. Of course these are all tests, so I went ahead and turned that piece of wood over and I wanted to see if I could line up another mandala, which I was able to. And I set the power to a real slow 3000 and cranked the power up to 95. I wanted to see what would happen. And it really did burn into it. I was really happy with the outcome actually, but this is overkill. But if you like it, that's all that matters. So I really enjoyed how it came out. After the burn was over, I decided to sand it to see if I can get some of that afterburn off and really create a contrast between light and dark. And it worked. I was really happy with the outcome. Working with wood was a lot of fun, but I want to see how it does with leather. At the heart of laser engraving and laser cutting, it really comes down to the decisions you make as far as the settings that you use. You have your speed setting, which is how fast a laser moves about your material, and you also have your power setting, which is how much actual power you're running to the laser itself. The higher the power of the laser, the more penetrative capabilities it has and the more burning capability it has. So if you run the laser too slow with too high of a power, you're gonna get a severe burn. If you run the machine with a really high speed and low power, you're barely gonna get a burn at all. So it really comes down to zoning in on what's perfect for the material that you're using. This here is 10 ounce leather, which is basically the thickest leather that I own. I was really happy with the outcome here. For engraving, I use 7,000 millimeters a minute and 60% power, and I really love how that chocolate brown engraving came out. As far as cutting, I went with 500 millimeters and 100% power, and it was able to cut in one pass smoothly. Look how nice those edges look. There's no burn on the bottom. I was thrilled with the outcome. But of course you gotta continue to experiment. This is the same 10 ounce leather, but I changed the power level on this particular burn. 
I stuck with the 7,000 millimeter a minute speed, but I went to 80% with the power. I stayed with the same cutting levels because they were so successful. 500 millimeters a minute with 100% power. Now on this engraving I used 80% power instead of 60% power and you can see the heat of the laser actually scarred the uh, outer rims of the uh, engraving. You see how it's darker around the actual engraving? That's caused by the heat. So I just wasn't going fast enough or I had too much power. In this case I'm going to say I had too much power because of how well the other engraving came out compared to this one. These are the necessary experiments that you'll do to find the most optimum settings for the material that you're choosing to use. I decided to run the same pattern again and this time I lowered the power to 70% instead of 80. I wanted to see the difference in increments between 60, 70 and 80. There is definitely a definitive difference between the 70 power and the 80 power but I think 60 power was the best when I had my laser going at 7,000 millimeters a minute. Wiping down your leather with oil always helps keep it healthy. After completing a keychain that I made with the laser engraver, I went ahead and oiled it down. And I noticed that a lot of the overburn that uh, was caused by using too high of a power was eliminated by the oil. Keeping slate can be both simple and very challenging. It all comes down to the artwork you choose to engrave. If you're dealing with vector graphics, it can be very simple. But most likely, in everything that you do engrave onto slate, you're going to have to invert the image that you're using. What you're seeing being engraved on your screen is a vector graphic that I inverted. See, when it comes to slate, when you engrave something on it, you're actually engraving a lighter color than the actual material is. So instead of engraving a darker color onto a lighter color like you would be on wood, now you have a dark material and the engravement actually comes out a lighter color. That's why you have to invert most of your artwork. I've seen some people laser engrave photographs onto slate and some of them come out great and some of them come out horrible. That's why I chose to use vector graphics for my first attempts at slate engraving. With vector graphics, you're basically dealing with two tones, black and white. When you're dealing with images, then you're going to have to convert to grayscale, and then you're dealing with many tones of, of gray and many different shades. That's why it's important to tweak your artwork before you engrave to slate. There's plenty of people that will share how they do it. Well, I have to say, I've just fallen in love with this laser engraving stuff. It's just so much fun for me. I see the possibilities with this device to go beyond leather crafting. Now I can use other mediums. I could see myself making gifts for my friends and family with this. Uh, it's just, I'm really having a lot of fun with this device. As far as pros and cons are concerned with the Euphora Laser 2, I can't find any cons. Of course, this is my first laser, but it's done everything I expected out of it. The laser works perfectly. I haven't had any hiccups or anything. The simplicity of this device is just incredible. It was so simple to put together. It was not intimidating at all. It really comes down to understanding certain fundamental aspects of laser engraving. You just want to dial in your settings. The speed that you decide to set the laser, the power that you decide to set the laser, what kind of image you plan on engraving. Just learn the fundamentals of laser engraving and you can take it from there. Because there is a lot of features in Lightburn. Although you can get away with learning just a few of them, you're going to want to learn more. Because the more you know, the better your engraving will come out. With that said, I want to give a shout out to the Louisiana Hobby Guy. He's an excellent teacher. I learned so much from his channel. Go and check it out. And yes, he also does a review of the Euphoria Laser 2. I also want to send a shout out to King Gubby. They sent me a reduction valve. This reduction valve was a lot better than the one I constructed at Home Depot. 
Now my Air Assist has a lot better airflow. If you are interested in purchasing this laser, I do have an affiliate link at the bottom of this video. I want to thank Sinus for asking me to do this review and introducing me to the world of laser engraving. I'm sure I will be doing this for the rest of my life. I want to thank everyone for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. Go ahead and subscribe. Give me a like. That would be really nice. I've got some leather crafting uh, projects coming up. Those should be on my YouTube channel shortly. Once again, thank you and have a good day.